Item SCP-016 Object Class Keter Description SCP-016 is a bloodborne pathogen recovered from a mine worker in unknown area who injured himself while working in a deep coal seam. Said wound became contaminated with coal dust from the mine possibly infecting the worker with dormant spores. Over the next several days SCP-016 proceeded to infect the remaining employees at the mining camp as well as the CDC crisis team dispatched to deal with the epidemic. Foundation personnel then took over the investigation and terminated all affected personnel. Patient Zero was brought into captivity and the mine shaft was collapsed by an explosive device. SCP-016 has an incubation period ranging from 24 hours to 2 years depending on the presence and number of other human hosts in the area. First symptoms resemble the common cold and include itchy eyes, runny nose, coughing, and bodily aches. Phase 2 begins in 48 hours and consists of a controlled form of hemorrhagic fever as the organism causes a small amount of blood to become aspirated in the lungs creating an aerosol effect. During Phase 3, the host crashes and bleeds out, bleeding profusely from every bodily orifice, including the nose, tear ducts, anus, skin pores, mouth, urethra, and, in case of females, vagina. Blood pressure skyrockets during the final stage. Hosts have been observed projectile vomiting blood to distances of over 5 meters. Should the host survive this near-total exsanguination, the pathogen will become dormant once more, returning to incubation phase. What distinguishes SCP-016 from other strains of hemorrhagic fever such as Ebola and Marburg is its unusual response to high stress. Should the subject undergo a high stress situation such as a life-threatening crisis, the organism will change its survival tactic from rapid reproduction to the rewriting of the host's DNA and stimulation of rapid cell division. Major physiological changes occur within the first 24 hours with complete bodily reconstruction occurring within two weeks time. Most hosts do not survive the process due to the heavy demands made on the body. Point one. An interesting side effect of the transformation is an increased aggressive urge. It is believed that this may be an attempt to maximize the spread of the virus in a manner similar to rabies. On another note, subjects who undergo bodily transformation no longer appear to exhibit SCP-16's hemorrhagic properties, however, subjects infected by transformed hosts will still undergo the normal SCP-016 infection process. Special Containment Procedures SCP-016 is to remain within the confines of a 5 by 5 by 5 meter room at all times maintained at a temperature not to exceed 0 degrees Celsius. SCP-016 itself is to remain in the petri dish in the containment cube at all times unless directed otherwise by level 4 or 05 personnel. Full documentation of experimentation with SCP-016 must be submitted before and after samples and duplicates of SCP-016 may be taken. Failure to follow these procedures will result in termination or reassignment as Class D personnel. Only authorized personnel may be permitted to obtain samples of an experiment with SCP-016 under BCL-5 containment conditions. If an outbreak does occur despite following the aforementioned procedures, directive base personnel are to implement a Code Sigma lockdown and containment plan. Infected personnel are to be terminated on site by security forces wearing standard mission-oriented protective posture, mock anti-biological and anti-chemical equipment. Should the infection not be contained after 48 hours, the on-site nuclear device is to be detonated. Remaining personnel are not to be evacuated under any circumstances. SCP-016 has been shown to survive for up to 6 hours on hard surfaces and up to several minutes in air. High-intensity ultraviolet light and high concentrations of orthothalaldehyde solution have been demonstrated to be effective in disinfecting non-organic surfaces. Item SCP-017 Object Class Keter Description SCP-017 is a humanoid figure approximately 80 centimeters in height anatomically similar to a small child but with no discernible identifying features. 
SCP-017 seems to be composed of a shadowy, smoke-like shroud. No attempt to find any object beneath the shroud has been successful, but the possibility has not been ruled out. SCP-17's reaction to shadows cast upon it is immediate and swift. SCP-017 leaps at the object casting the shadow and completely encloses it in its shroud, whereupon it returns to its normal size, leaving no trace of the object behind. Special Containment Procedures SCP-017 is contained in an acrylic glass cage, 100 cm by 50 cm by 50 cm, centrally suspended in a concrete room measuring 6 m by 6 m by 4 m. Attached to the walls, ceiling, and floor of the room are high-intensity arc lamp spotlights pointed directly at the acrylic cage to ensure that SCP-017 is constantly exposed to light from every angle. Personnel assigned to the SCP-017 control room are to monitor the functionality of the spotlights in the emergency generator system and call for maintenance immediately upon knowledge of a burnt-out lamp or an issue with the generator. The only circumstance under which personnel are allowed entrance is to replace lamps. Personnel entering the room are required to wear the designated full-body reflective suits and must be cautioned not to step in front of functional spotlights. Item SCP-018 Object Class Euclid Description SCP-018 has the appearance of a Super Bowl made by the Wemo Company in 1969. It is 6 cm in diameter and colored red. Found when an unknown company was hired to clean out a warehouse that had Wemo merchandise in it. SCP-018 was noted to be able to bounce with extreme height. At first thought to be a pleasant child's toy, SCP-018 was able to bounce with over 200% efficiency, that is, if dropped 1 meter, it would bounce 2, then 4, then 8, then 16. The ball soon became a dangerous projectile, reaching speeds estimated at over 100 km per hour and damaging property and injuring 5 in the city of Unknown City. It came to a rest after several days in the nearby Lake of Unknown Lake and was retrieved by SCP personnel. Due to the speed of the object and the total surprise by its victims, no cover-up story was required or initiated. Special Containment Procedures SCP-018 is to be contained in its specialty metal restraint inside of a 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter sealed box lined with heavy synthetic padding. The sealed box is then submerged in the center of a 10 meters by 10 meters by 10 meters polyethylene holding tank. If SCP-018 is to break free from the holding box, the polyethylene-based goo will slow down kinetic activity enough for proper retrieval by containment personnel. Personnel entering SCP-18's holding chamber are to wear specialized plating and a breathing apparatus before being lowered into the polyethylene tank. If SCP-018 is loose outside of the polyethylene tank, personnel are advised to secure themselves in a separate room in closed doorways or hatches to isolate SCP-018 until containment teams arrive. Item SCP-019 Object Class Keter Description SCP-019 appears to be a very large ceramic vase 1.8 meters in diameter at the mouth and 2.4 meters high. Style and decoration indicate it was created in classical Greece, although conclusive dating is impossible as the surface is entirely unbreakable by any known means. If a successful method is discovered, SCP-019 is to be destroyed with prejudice. Periodically, entities emerge from SCP-019. Collectively, these are known as SCP-019-2. The entities vary in many aspects but tend to be small, vaguely humanoid, though they may have animaloid features and extremely hostile. They often choose to attack with teeth or claws. Although fairly delicate also, surprisingly, flammable, they are reasonably strong and pose a considerable threat in large numbers. When kept at zero degrees Celsius and totally at rest, entities will emerge from SCP-019 at a rate of approximately one entity per hour. The following traits are known to affect SCP-019-2's manifestation rate. One movement of SCP-019. 
2 threat to SCP-019. 3 extreme temperature highs and lows. 4 sudden shift in surrounding environment. 5 introduction of objects or organisms to the inside of SCP-019 known to cause a flood reaction. Traits that may or may not influence SCP-019-2's manifestation rate. 1. Presence of human life near SCP-019. 2. Current weather patterns. 3. Specific individuals near SCP-019. Some individuals seem to affect SCP-019-2's emergence rate more drastically than others. In addition, tipping or tilting SCP-019 will create a reaction as though it was previously filled with SCP-019-2 specimens. Although viewers looking into SCP-019 from above will merely observe a dark hole. Due to the production rates of SCP-019-2 when the object is disturbed, measurement of the internal cavity is difficult, but it is suspected to be inconsistent with outside measurements. Item SCP-020 Object Class Keter Description SCP-020 is a fast-spreading fungal organism that is capable of affecting the senses and behavior of living creatures, including humans. Samples of SCP-020 exhibit an unknown effect that renders them effectively invisible to direct observation even when under a microscope. SCP-020 is only visible to humans when viewed through photographic or video surveillance. Once SCP-020 forms a colony, usually within a human residence, it will produce spores that affect the behavior of humans around it. Affected subjects will increase the heat and humidity within their homes to create an environment more suitable to the growth of SCP-020. Affected subjects also become more sociable in many cases and often invite acquaintances to their homes to further spread the organism. As the spores and mold colonies are invisible to affected subjects, the mold may sometimes grow directly on living subjects. As the spores and colonies within a home approach critical concentration, the health of affected human subjects will rapidly deteriorate, resulting in death. Further spread of the mold may occur as the bodies of any deceased subjects are encountered by emergency responders and healthcare agents as well as transportation of the bodies to local morgues. SCP-020 was first encountered in unknown area, where an undercover SCP agent noted dramatic personality changes in personnel working at the local hospital. Upon investigation by a containment team, it was discovered that almost all civilians had been infected, as well as a majority of the town. The civilian population was terminated, and the town incinerated under cover of a local flash forest fire. To date, over 12 outbreaks of SCP-020 have been reported. Investigations are currently underway to determine the source of these outbreaks and possible preventative measures. Special Containment Procedures Samples of SCP-020 are stored in a series of sealed cultivation chambers inside a sealed containment room at Biological Research Area 12 which is accessible only via airlock. Nutrients are administered via automated robotic systems as the cultivation chamber must remain sealed at all times. Hermetically sealed video surveillance cameras are installed within the containment room and must be checked daily for integrity. Any personnel entering the containment room must wear biosafety level 5 equipment including rebreathers and undergo full antifungal disinfection upon exiting.